WXII 12 News at 6 starts right now. A crime spike in the Piedmont Triad, how local police officers are targeting trouble areas. One year later, a closer look at the changes happening along Business 40 and how soon the stretch through downtown Winston-Salem could reopen. I want to make a difference and leave maybe a legacy or that I had a one small part in maybe finding a treatment or a cure for Alzheimer's. Fighting for a cure, our Lainey Pope explains the research happening here in the Piedmont and her personal connection to the fight that millions face every single day. First at six, gun-related crime is up in Winston-Salem. Criminal investigators say crime spiked significantly in just the last two weeks. It's up nearly 40% from this same time a year ago. Kirsten Gutierrez live tonight in downtown Winston-Salem. Kirsten, what's the police department doing about this? Kenny, the police department created a task force targeting what they call trouble areas. And in, in just the last week, they've arrested 27 people and seized 37 firearms, including this one right here. Now, the task force is made up of the violent firearm investigations team and the gang investigation unit. Captain Stephen Tolley, head of the criminal investigations division, says the past two weeks there hasn't been a homicide. In the same time frame last year, there were three with a task force designated to the high crime areas. Tully is hopeful their work will prevent unnecessary death and shootings. Very often a few offenders are responsible for a large amount of crimes. My hope is we can identify the offenders that are responsible for this uptick, uptick in, in um, crimes, get those offenders in custody, get those guns off the street, and bring this number back down. Tolly says that if you hear a gunshot to please report it, he says with the community's help, they're able to solve more violent crimes. Live in Winston-Salem, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Kirsten, thank you. One of those crimes happened this past weekend. Witnesses say somebody shot into a home where there were five children inside. Pictures from the scene were taken early Sunday morning. The shooting happened at a home on 12th Street, not far from Northwest Boulevard. There were three adults in that home as well. Two of them had to be hospitalized. Everyone is expected to be okay. Elsewhere tonight, four people are accused of trying to rob a gaming shop in Rockingham County. They are all behind bars this evening in Virginia. Police in Eden say an employee at that shot shop shot back during the crime and one of the suspects ended up being injured. Investigators have released these surveillance photos of two of the suspects, Yalik Desmond, Zaire Brown and Jordan Turner. James Flood and Darian Rucker are also facing charges. No pictures of either of them. Investigators say they tried to rob the vault, which is a gaming shop on Saturday night. Rockingham County deputies have also linked Brown and Turner to another robbery at the Park View Mart in the town of Eden. Looking ahead, parents can learn more about where district leaders want to build a new elementary school in Winston-Salem. There's a community meeting scheduled for tomorrow at Brunson <coughs> Elementary on Hawthorne Road. The school district is eyeing a site between Ivy and Patterson Avenues just north of downtown. It's a little more than two miles away from where the school is right now. Earlier this year, teachers sent us photos from inside the school. They say mold is causing health problems for staff as well as students. In 2016, the school district approved a bond measure that includes money for a new school building. Now, district leaders say it will open in 2022. In Commitment 2020, a former attorney who now works in the financial aid office at Wake Forest University is running for the North Carolina State Senate. Democrat Terry Legrand plans to file in District 31 next month when the filing period opens. That district serves Davie County and parts of Forsyth County, including the city of Winston-Salem. Legrand says she wants lawmakers work along party lines and across party lines to provide things like good jobs, affordable health care, and common sense gun safety laws. She ran for a state house seat in 2018 and ended up losing in the general election. A Greensboro man has caught the eye of President Trump with a viral rap video. Rappers from all over the country right now are taking part in the MAGA challenge. The man behind the contest is Bryson Gray. He says he started wearing a giant MAGA hat to express his feelings for the current presidential administration. The local rapper wrote a tune praising President Trump and the president endorsed the idea, tweeting a promise to bring the winner of this challenge to the White House for a personal meet and greet and to listen to that winner perform the song. No, I knew it was for real because Trump tweeted it, but <laughs> but, but uh, they, they wanted to just keep me in the loop for picking a winner. So they want they want yeah they want to keep me involved with it. Does that mean you can't be the winner, or, or can you? I'm going. I, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, they said I'm going regardless to perform. Because yeah. of what you, you yeah, exactly. It's my song. Yeah. yeah. 
Bryson Gray says he used to support Democrat Bernie Sanders, but now strongly supports President Trump. The cash-strapped Department of Transportation is getting some help from the state. Governor Roy Cooper signed a bill today giving the DOT millions of dollars to start road pack road projects back up again. The bill basically transfers $100 million to the agency, also forgives a $90 million loan and also allows extra $100 million in road building projects. Now, the DOT says that its cash balance fell because of unprecedented hurricane repairs. Well, folks, it has been one year since Business 40 closed in downtown Winston-Salem. Crews are working really hard to turn this stretch into Salem Parkway. And if all goals are according to plan. It will reopen in a few months. New bridges, walking paths, shoulders, as well as long, longer ramps, as you see here, are all part of the big project. At least 80,000 people a day drove on this 1.2 mile stretch of Business 40. But for the most part, engineers say the closure has not caused too many traffic problems. I think a lot of people were shocked when we closed Business 40 that the city just didn't come to, to a gridlock situation. And, and my hat's off to all the commuters because for years we preached, find you an alternate route and then also find an alternate route to that just in case it doesn't work for you. And I think everybody listened. If everything goes according to plan, Business 40 will be back open sometime between late winter and early spring as Salem Parkway.